Hey, welcome to Auto Geek Show Car Garage here in sunny Stewart, Florida. I'm your host, Mike Phillips, and tonight we have a very special project. Behind me is a 2012 Scion TC 7.0 in the voltage yellow, high voltage yellow. And this is a limited production car. They only made 22,000 of these cars. Now, the owner is a friend of mine, and she's had this car for about five months, bought it brand new off the dealership lot, and nothing has ever been done to the car before. So before we started, I went ahead and washed the car thoroughly, and then I didn't have enough time to buff out the entire car, so all I've done is I've polished out the entire front clip. And this is important because tonight we're gonna be using some products from G Technique. Now these are nano quartz coatings, and when it comes to the paint products, it's important that the surface is completely defect-free and completely stripped and free of any oil, grease, wax, or polishing residues. So that's what we're going to be doing with the front clip of this. Then me and a bunch of guys, we'll tackle the rest of the car later on. Then we're going to go through the rest of the car and we're going to be adding the um, wheel armor to the wheels, uh, the tire dressing to the tires, and the glass polish to the glass. And basically, we're just going to do a complete G-Technique makeover to this yellow Scion. So let's just get started. Now, first of all, I went ahead and I washed and I polished the paint. I removed all the swirls and scratches. Up on the forum, I already posted a video and some high resolution pictures to show the con true condition of the paint when it arrived here. And when it arrived here, it did have light swirls. Um, I've got a how-to book out called The Art of Detailing, and in this book I had to go through and describe the categories of paint condition so a person could wash their car and evaluate the finish and tell where they're at as far as the paint condition, and that would give them a, a, a road plan as to where to go to get to their goal, whether it be, just be to get the car in excellent condition or say show car quality condition. When I looked at this paint, I kind of graded this as condition three. That's in good condition. And it had light swirls. Most of these would be from incorrect washing techniques, possibly using a tatty wash mitt, maybe not using careful wiping techniques. So I went ahead, I washed the car, then I clayed it. I removed all the above surface bonnet contaminants. Then I machine polished it and removed all the swirls. And just with a quick inspection here with the Auto Geek Swirl Finder light, it does have a swirl free finish. Now, before we get started, I took some IPA diluted with water and I completely wiped down this front clip and the mirrors, because we're going to be treating those mirrors too, to make sure all the polishing residues were removed. And that's important before using the G Technique Crystal Lacquer. So the next thing we're going to do is we're ready to actually go ahead and put the G Technique Crystal Lacquer onto the paint. Now, something I came out here and did at 1 o'clock is I went ahead and applied some of this product to one of the applicator pads. And it's been drying for over three hours. And the difference is, is this is soft and pliable while this has become solidified somewhat like cardboard. And I want to point this out for a couple of reasons. One, you don't want to leave the lid off your crystal lacquer. This stuff will solidify. This is the real deal. This is a real paint coating. The other reason is, is as you're wiping the product off with your microfiber towels, the residue that you pull off on your towel is going to harden just like it did on the applicator pad. And this is going to make it so this microfiber towel is no longer going to be able to be used in the future to wipe down paint. You might be able to keep it for doing other things, but it's really going to uh, limit its use as far as wiping down paint. So just be cognizant of that. Now, the way you use this, and I have two friends here. Rennie, Jeff, why don't you come on in just come around here and go ahead and grab uh, some of the applicator pads over there. The way you use this is take the lid off and then there's two sides to the applicator pads that come with the G Technique Crystal Lacquer. There's sort of a um, gauze side and then there's a very soft side. And we're going to use the very soft side to put this product on. Okay, you want to go ahead and grab a couple applicators. Come on over here. And, and uh, here's another bottle over here if you want to go ahead and grab the lid and take the lid off there. And the way you want to use this is just take and put the soft side of this onto the, the, uh, the bottle opening here and blot on two or three dabs. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take and start applying this and you can go in 
sort of a crisscross pattern, back and forth, overlapping circular motion. The key here is to do this gently and softly, but to also work this coating onto the paint. And if you were to ever see paint at a microscopic level, although to our eyes it looks completely flat, it actually has little hills and valleys, pockets and pores, and something we call interstices, which is microscopic cracks and fissures. And what we want to do is we want to take and push this coating as good as we can completely into the paint. Now normally you just want to do a panel at a time and you got to do this fairly quickly because after you work this product in you want to come back and then go ahead and wipe it off. And if you wait too long it can get a little hard to uh, wipe off. And what you got to do when you're applying this is you need to take and look at this paint from different angles. And you got to make sure you're getting a good uniform coating over the entire surface. And guys, just to let you know, we want to just do the front fenders forward and, of course, the whole front bumper and spoiler. That's the only thing that has been polished so far and chemically stripped with IPA. So this is pretty easy, just taking and applying this on. Now what this coating is going to do is it's going to create a very highly repellent coating which will repel water and dirt, and those are the things that land on your car, and keep them from bonding where they could cause corrosion. It's also going to make cleaning your car a lot easier using the G-Wash, which is specifically made to maintain any car coated with G-Technique products. And one thing I'd point out is light colored cars are always harder to see light films on. If this is a black car, it'd be a lot easier to tell if you'd missed a spot. So you just want to make sure you do a very thorough job of taking and spreading this product out. Now, this product takes three hours to cure till it's hard, and it takes 12 hours to fully cure, to what we call full cure. So you don't want to put anything else on this coating until 12 hours has passed. How's that working there for you, Rennie? Looks good. It goes on easy. Yeah, it's just like a really nice, clear, thin film, isn't it? Yeah. And as long as you use the overhead lights and get down at an angle, you can see where your film is and if there's any spots you've missed. Now, you can put this on any hard, smooth surface. So we're going to be putting this on the paint. We're going to be putting on the plastic housings on the mirror, also the headlights. But you could also use this on things like chrome trim. You can even see where it's... It almost looks lighter where you're applying it. Yep. Okay, so let's just, well. yeah, let's go ahead and tackle that fender. You finish that fender out. And it looks like we've got this entire hood coated. There's a spot. Yeah, tell you what, Jeff, why don't you come down here with a fresh set of eyes and give this a look over and make sure it good eye. Just make sure we have 100% uniform coating. Good job on polishing out this front bit, right? Yeah, you know, when you apply the product like this, you can really feel the smoothness of the paint, can't you? Now, this, this car has been sitting outside every day she drives it to work uncovered, and uh, when I went to fill it, I did the baggie test before I polished it, of course, and uh, Okay, I think we got it all. And it actually had a pretty rough feel to it, so yes, I did clay it before I polished it. Okay, now when you're not using this, again, put the lid on, okay, so this doesn't start to harden and dry inside the bottle. Isn't that interesting, Phil, that how that got hard? Yeah, sure did. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to take clean microfiber towels. Now, just a little shout out to Rob Earl at G Technique over there in England. I've been uh, emailing him back and forth asking him about the different application procedures. And I like the little technique that he shows in one of his videos for folding and using a microfiber towel. And let's just, let me just show that to you again. Take your microfiber towel, fold it out, fold all the sides into themselves, and you end up with just a completely soft microfiber towel with no edges that can mar the paint. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to do a little uh, thing here called the train. And um, Jeff, you're going to follow me, and then Randy, you're going to follow Jeff. And we're going to go through, and I'm going to wipe the first pass off, and then Jeff's going to follow me, then Randy's going to follow me, and then we'll just stand back and give it a good look and make sure we've got all the residue off. If you don't get it off, you know, you're going to see it there later, because this is the real deal. This is a real coating that's going to actually bond to the paint, and it's going to become a functional part of the paint coating itself.
Okay, go ahead and start following me there, Jeff. Yeah. And, and go ahead and get down at an angle. Make sure all the residue is pulled off of there. Now, it wipes off effortlessly as long as you get in there within that short window of time after applying it and start removing it. Okay, I'm going to come over here hit this fender. And what's happening as we, as we do this is the residue is building up on my microfiber towel. And, uh, and this microfiber towel is going to become spent. I can refold it and use the other side. But pretty soon when I go to another panel, I'm going to have to get to another microfiber towel. Okay, I'd say my microfiber towel is used up on this side. Up here, and you can, uh, I think you can see, can Yancey, does that show up? You can see that product coming off onto the microfiber towel. There's a big square spot there. So I'm just gonna refill, and that's gonna turn hard, so this will become delegated to some other task besides paint work. Hey Jeff, how you doing? Let me see if this uh, swirl finder light helps us to see any residue on here. This is kind of the dark side of the car. There we go. I hear a Harley out there. Okay. I think we got it all, gentlemen. And that's how you apply the G Technique Crystal Lacquer. Use the very soft side of the applicator pads. You want to go ahead and apply this, work it in thoroughly, use a crisscross pattern, overlapping circular motion. The goal is just to take and push that product as good as you can into the paint. You don't need to let it dry. Come back with multiple microfiber towels and go ahead and wipe that coating off and don't leave any smears, splotchiness, or excess product residue sit on any part of the hood. So next, we're going to go over here. We're going to actually go to the glass polish. Now, G Technique has three different products for the glass system. We got the G4. This is a glass polish. Now what we're going to use this for is to remove any embedded uh, road grime, road film, or water spots off the glass. We want to get this perfectly clean before we put the coating on. After we put the G4 on, we're going to put the G1 on. This is the glass coating. And then there's a residue remover to help us to get this off. There's a very special technique for applying the glass coating and then for taking it off. But let's go ahead and we're going to start with the glass uh, polisher. So what we want to do is grab uh, some applicator pads here. Tell you what, Jeff, you want to jump on the other side and give me a hand with this? Okay. Tell you what, I'll let you guys take a break. Jeff's going to jump in here. The other Jeff. Okay. Give me a hand with the glass polish. Let's go ahead and do the windshield. Do you get that side? Let's pull the wiper blades up. Now again, I've already washed this, but go ahead and just fill that, Jeff. You can feel there's kind of a road grime on there. A lot of times when you drive your car in the rain, what happens, let me give this a good shake here, what happens is most of the cars on the road are always dropping things like transmission fluid, a little bit of motor oil, antifreeze, and you get hundreds of thousands of cars dropping this stuff on the highway, then it rains, all the cars in front of you throw that road spray up onto your car. Not only does your paint get stained, but your glass gets stained too. And a normal glass cleaner, just a spray on, spray off type product, isn't gonna peel that road grime off. So that's where you wanna use a dedicated polish. Now this uses uniform nanoparticle technology to go in there and abrade the glass and pull that that road grime and the water spots off, but it won't scratch the glass at the same time. Here you go. Then you just want to take, apply this using an overlapping circular motion and do what I always call put a little passion behind the pad. That means elbow grease. Get in there and just start really working this in. And then what helps to take this off is instead of using a microfiber towel, it's just to use some old fashioned terry cloth towel. Oftentimes terry cloth, the nap, or what the little loop fibers are that make terry cloth what terry cloth is, 
is a little more stout than microfiber. What this does, it helps you to grab and bite and pull this film off there. So a lot of times we always use microfiber towels. We're trying to create that show car finish because microfiber is gentle to the paint. But it's the terry cloth sometimes we want to use for that extra bite to remove a, uh, a film like this. A little goes a long way. A little does go a long way. Tell you what, let me see a little another drop there. Yeah, go ahead if you want to put the coating on the front bumper since we didn't get that. Okay. And it's pretty easy to tell. Um, there was quite a bit of an accumulation wherever the wiper arms didn't actually draw across the glass. That's where a lot of the water spots are. So do a little more extra effort up here in the high spot and over here on the sides. Okay, and while we're doing this, Rennie and Jeff, they're going to get the front bumper and the valance down there that we didn't get in the very beginning. Do you need more of this, Jeff? No, okay. okay, let me hand you the terry cloth towel to pull that off. There you go. And one trick for whenever you're trying to pull a film off with a terry cloth towel is instead of taking big swipes, just take small little swipes, little bites like this. And when you do that, what's happening is the nap of the terry cloth is able to get more bite over the surface tension the product has to the glass so you can pull it off. If you try to take big wipes off at a time, you'll find yourself struggling because the polish has more grip to the glass than you can break with a wipe. So small little bites just like this. How's that coming off, Jeff? Beautiful. Okay, I think I got it all here. There. Crystal clear. And now let's give that a feel. That feels smooth, doesn't it? Okay, so we got that all completely clean. And now we're ready to put on the glass polish. Just hang tight there, Jeff. I'll get you an applicator pad. Now this is called Clear Vision, or what's this called? It's the Clear Vision Smart Glass. And fool me, because Clear Vision, the way they spell it is uh, one word instead of two words. Now, when you go to apply this, let's see, this would be the G1. Shake this product up really well. And the way you want to apply this is you want to come up here, and again, you want to apply a uniform coating over the entire windshield. You want to give the windshield three applications, all the side glass, one application. And the reason for that is because the wipers are going to be drawing and running across this glass, and that's going to have a tendency to want to wear it off a little bit. So you want to get three really good applications on at least the windshield. So we're going to go ahead and give this a shake. So I'm just going to... No, you want to uh, do this in uh, out of the wind, out of the dust, uh, in the shade. Dry. Yep. It would end up drying as part of the coating. Yeah, we're lucky here because I've got the air conditioning cranked down to about 72 degrees. So it uh, keeps everything nice and cool. Everything's nice and clean, but uh, good point there, Randy. Now, Jeff, when you go to use this, just take and stick this on here and then just blot it a few times. There you go. and kind of divide this into quarters in your mind's eye and then just thoroughly coat one quarter then move on to the next quarter. Now when you're doing the windshield you want to put this first coating on and then go ahead and hit the side windows then come back and put a second coating on. Let that set up for about 10 to 15 minutes then put a third coating on and let it set up for about 10 minutes and then wipe it off. And the kit comes with a product called residue remover and that's going to help you to get that residue off because this stuff is really bonding tight to the glass and that's what you want it to do. You want it to bond to the glass, becomes a functional part of the glass so it won't wear off. But that means it's hard to wipe off.
Okay, can I get a little bit more of that? Thanks, sir. Now the benefit to this is, what it's gonna do is it's gonna create a dirt and water repellent surface. So bug splatter, road grime, uh, dirt, rain, sleet, snow, none of these things are gonna be able to stick to the glass. In fact, after you get going about 30 miles an hour, you won't have to use wipers anymore, everything's just gonna fly off. And that, uh, that's good for safety, especially at nighttime driving, or if you're driving in full sense, you have some glare. It also helps your wipers to clear them easier if you do use them. Okay, let's let that set up. Let's go ahead and do the polish of the rest of the glass here. It's very pretty, isn't it? It's fun to drive, too. Here you go. I'll hit this side window, and let's get this back glass. We'll call that good. I'll get the sunroof and the drivers. I got the driver's uh, windows down, so. Is that one down? You can hit that side one over there. Yeah, you can see the water spots back here, can't you? Mm Looking good, Jeff. One thing you do want to try to do is avoid getting this on any trim. Most polishes tend to dry white. So just take your time when you're applying it and avoid getting it on any black plastic vinyl or rubber trim. And if you do, just wipe it off immediately. Okay. Okay, I think we're ready for the polish there. That's the remover. Oh, here it is. G1. How's that front bumper coming out, guys? Okay, so these side windows and this back one are just gonna put one coat of this onto these. Have you guys ever heard of G Technique before? Yeah. Read about it on the forums? Yeah. Well, AutoGeek just brought it in, so this is a brand new product line for us. A lot of interest. You can come on in. We are filming, we are live. So we've already kind of started this product. Is that your Hardy Davidson I heard out there? I thought so. Here you go, Jeff. Oh, okay. Well, we'll take a look at that right now. We're live broadcasting over the internet to the world <laughs> as we're putting a coating on here. This is the G Technique glass coating, so water will just fly off. Actually, it becomes a functional part of the glass itself, so it doesn't actually wear off. 
Well, I don't know, but tonight's a G Technique night. So those are the products we're actually saying with a name since I mic'd and we're live. <laughs> there. Can I uh, get that from you? Most of the time, guys, um, when we're doing these projects, at this point right now, we're doing a lot of machine polishing. Um, tonight, we're showing, I think, five different coatings. So this car arrived early today, and I went in and washed it, and I polished out the front clip and basically got the whole car ready just for the coating application. Need some more? There you go. And in the future, uh, Brad? So Brad, when are you guys named Brad? I always post on the uh, autogeekonline.net on the forum homepage the project that's going on. So just in case you want to see what's going on. There we go. Okay, so this has probably had uh, six or seven minutes. Let's go ahead and put another coating on up here. By the time we get this on, we can go back and wipe the coating off on the side windows and the back window. Then we'll come back up and put the third coating on up here. Then we'll get ready to remove it with the uh, residue remover. Okay. Do you have the coating? I have it. Here we go. There you go, buddy. Okay, so we're going to put the second coating on the windshield right now. And again, I'm going to kind of divide this up into quarters, work one quarter at a time. I'm going to rub this in right over the first coating. Hey, get out of my section, man. Okay, let me get another little dab here. So what's your first name, the guy with the Harley? Alan, the, Dave. Dave? So I met Dave and Alan at a local establishment and uh, uh, is Alan has the brown Harley Davidson, the custom built one? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't see the blue one. And uh, I told the guys we were looking for some Harley Davidsons to bring down, do some show car makeovers. And so they said they'd bring them down, let us check them out, and we'll set up a date. So if you're into bike detailing, be sure to check the forum homepage to see when that date's coming up. Okay. Did you get the other side of the windshield 100%? Yes. Okay. So while this is drying, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the coating off on the back. Now, to do this, they have a product called Residue Remover. This is the G2. And again, we're going to use terry cloth towels, give our product a little bit more bite. Uh, we're actually just uh, hitting the windows right now, but we're going to be getting ready to do the armor coat on the wheels if you want to get ready for that. Okay. So, put a little bit of this on there. Come back and then just take this off. That works pretty good. Yep, we did the uh, the crystal lacquer on the paint up front. After we chemically stripped it, we, we washed it, clayed it, polished it till all the swirls were gone, then we put that product on. Okay, how's that look to you from that angle? Okay. Yeah, I've already tried this on my own car. It works really good. In fact, we just had a big rainstorm go through here, so I had a, a chance to really try it out, and the water just flew off, like after 30 miles an hour, just gone. Okay. You need more of this uh, remover? Okay.
Okay, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to come back and put the third application onto the windshield. We put one application onto the side windows and we've already removed it. This will be the third and the last coating. Then we're going to go ahead and let this dry for about 10 minutes. And I think what we'll do next is we'll get started on the wheel armor for the wheels. And Randy, are you going to give us a hand for that? Sure. Okay. Uh, one second, I'm going to put a second coating on here. just want to bring it to your attention. There you go. We're putting a third application yeah, right over the. This is the. Uh, that is the. Res uh, residue the okay. Take it off, right? Uh, we're going to put a third application on. Yeah. So you need your applicator pad. Yeah. A lot of times when we're representing another company, we like to follow their directions, you know, because we're representing them. And their instructions are to put three coatings on. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. Here you go. I've worked for a lot of different polish companies and one of the things that they try to do with all their employees is to keep everybody on message. You can't have 20 people running around saying different things. So it's just important to always follow the manufacturer's official recommendations. When you get these products on your own, you can kind of customize and do what you want. But usually best results come when you follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Okay, you finish up that side. That's the third coat on this side. Then we'll take and we'll remove that. Okay, the next thing we're going to use is the C5 wheel armor. Now to do this, I'm going to have some help from my friend Rennie. Rennie, come on over here. Uh, Jeff, could you bring over one of those? Can you come get this? I want to make sure we don't use any of this stuff twice. So go ahead and get that out of here. Thanks, buddy. And go ahead and grab. I think these have been all used. Okay, here's a clean applicator. This is the wheel armor, C5 wheel armor. So what we want to do is we're going to bring this right down here. Now this has some custom wheels. These are factory wheels. They're painted. And one of the first things I did is I went out and I washed them really well. Then I wiped them down with the IPA uh, alcohol and water mix just to make sure there was no residues left. Now a lot of times there's a lot of spray tire shines on the market and if you were to spray the tire shine onto the tires you're going to get overspray onto the wheel and these have to be completely stripped clean in order to get the wheel armor to bite and to bond onto this. So what you want to go ahead and do is just blot that on. Yep, right onto the painted spokes. And this is a fairly complicated wheel so what Rennie's going to do is just take his time and these applicators are nice and small, so we can get in here and just going to rub that armor all over the, uh, the spokes and then the lip of the rim itself here, and then down here to the center where the lug nuts are. And just like we did to the paint, you want to take and you want to work this in, rub it in, go two or three different directions, and then we're going to come back after the entire wheel is done and go ahead and wipe that off with a clean microfiber towel. Now what this is going to do is this is, uh, again, it's another nano quartz um, coating it's going to bond right onto that painted finish and it's going to become what they call a functional part of the coating and it's going to repel dirt and water and oil so a lot of times on the road again i was talking about you get this rain splatter comes up and it's got an oily film in it and it might get onto the wheel but it's not going to stick onto the wheel because of this coating it's highly repellent I can tell Randy's going to want to put some of these on his uh, Camaro wheels. He's got yeah. a uh, 2000, 2011, right? Yeah. Red Jewel Tint Camaro. And uh, we actually had that on our TV show, and we buffed it out down here and put a show car finish on it. And ever since then, Randy's done a really good job of taking care of it. And one of the cool things about a coat like this is a lot of times your brake dust in the, is going to stick to the wheel. So this is going to keep brake dust from sticking to the wheel. So it's going to make future cleanings a lot faster and a lot easier. Now while he's doing that, Jeff, you want to give me a hand? Let's go ahead, and although it's going to be out of the sight of the camera, let's go ahead and put the T1 tire and trim coating. Now I want you to go ahead and shake this up really well. Now this is a tire dressing that you can also use on trim. This is called a tire swipe. Am I in the camera there at all? Okay. So this is called a tire swipe. And while they're doing the wheel over here, I'm going to have Jeff come over here and start dressing this tire, work around the car, get the... Oh, we can come over here. Yeah, let's go to this side here, Jeff. 
and we can be on camera. And uh, just a little, t little tip here. This is called a tire swipe. There's all kinds of these things on the market. And the way I usually use these is um, take and put some right along the edge here. Okay, just like that, and kind of rub that with my finger. And that way I can take and run this around the lip of the wheel and get all the rubber from the top of the tire all the way down to the rim of the tire. Then put some just right down the center. Kind of a simple tick, but a tip, but if you don't have it next to the edge, you're never going to get the dressing right down here close to where the rim is. So here you go. Just go ahead and apply that. And again, this is a, this is a coating that's going to bond onto the tire. It's going to make a, it's going to form a permanent bond and it's going to repel dirt and oil. It's going to give you a nice satin finish. If you want a higher gloss, you could add a second coat. But if you want that natural uh, rubber look like it just came out of the mold, then you can just put one coat on. What do you think, Jeff? Looks pretty good. Yeah, go ahead and work that in a little bit more. Do you need some more product? That's a brand new swipe. Yeah. Here, I'll let you do it. Go ahead. And then go ahead and hit the other two tires. And then when we get this one, Get the armor coat wiped off, then go ahead and hit this front tire up there. Okay, sounds good. Jeff was also on our TV show. What year is that Mustang? 2005? That one's a 2007. 2007. He's got a blue 2007 Mustang. Really nice. Keeps it polished up all the time, of course. And uh, I think he was on episode eight of our TV show. He's a real car guy. He's got a couple of Mustangs and a Chevy. Comes down here and helps me do a lot of my projects, and he knows I appreciate it. So Jeff, you've used a lot of tire dressings. What do you think about this? What do you think of the appearance there? This is one of the better ones I've seen. Like you said, it makes it look like it's, you know, like it's, like it's brand new. Right out of the mold. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I worked when I was younger in a, re a tire recapping store. I uh, helped to recap uh, passenger tires and truck tires. And when they come out of the mold, brand new rubber just has a deep, dark satin look. It isn't shiny at all. Now, when it comes to tire dressings, a lot of people like that high shine, high gloss look. And you can get that if you want to put two applications on. So go ahead and won't you work your way around, get the rest of those tires. How are we doing up here, guys? Okay, we can start wiping off after this. Yeah, once it's completely applied, then go ahead, just like we did the paint up here, start wiping it off. And um, again, we're not going to want to use these microfibers for anything paint related after this because this coating is going to start to crystallize. It's going to start to harden up actually in the fibers themselves. Now these are some pretty custom wheels and being brand new, these actually have a real nice high gloss, don't they? Yeah. So can you tell a difference after you put the coating on? Yeah. So it maximize the gloss a little bit? Up a little more. What's the feel like? Can you feel that with your finger where you've applied it and wiped it off? It's slick. Slick. So you've got a high gloss, you've got a slick surface, and it's uh, really made that wheel stand out. I uh, can't wait to get the dressing on there. It's going to really look good. Okay, so while you guys are doing that, I think, all right, what do you think? You see 10 minutes went by? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start taking off the, um, the glass sealant here. Again, I'm going to use terry cloth and get the residue remover. And that does seem to really help. Okay, this is the G2 residue remover. I'm just going to take and put a little bit right here onto my terry cloth towel, just kind of blot a little bit. And you can see this film on here, and that's a good sign. That means we've coated the entire thing. I'm just going to come down here and start taking this off. Now, where we're filming this at, this is Stewart, Florida, South Florida. And um, one of the things that Florida is famous for, if you don't like the weather, just wait 20 minutes and it'll change. And you can go from a perfectly sunny day to a torrential downpour by the time you turn your head and look a different direction. It can be that fast. And what this coating is going to do is it's going to make this, the water just completely fly off the road. About a month ago, I was headed towards the airport, and uh, I lived in Oregon all my life. We get a lot of rain in Oregon. And on the way to the airport, the rain started coming down, not heavy, it came down in buckets. And I've never seen this before, but the cars on the highway were actually pulling off to the side of the road and just waiting until this uh, storm had passed by. It was coming down that hard. In Oregon, everybody just drives through it, but I don't think it rains as hard in Oregon as it does here in Florida. So this is a nice product to have on your windshield, you know, no matter where you live, but especially if you live in a place with a lot of inclement weather, rain, snow, sleet, things like that. You know, Randy, you do a good job. Thank you, sir. 
Now the lady that owns this, her name's Nikki, she thought it looked good before. I think she's gonna be surprised when she comes down here tonight and picks it up. Cause it looked good when it got here, but it looks better now. That looks good. Doing a good job there, Jeff. We've got two Jeffs here. Let's see if I can miss a little spot right there. One second. Hey, Yancey, before I put these blades down, can you come down here and just uh, pan over this? Show everybody how this looks. Can you take this? And uh, here's the lid for that. I always want to keep the lid on these when you're not using them. And I think that is just as smooth as can be now. So it creates a really smooth surface. Uh, the term they use is um, it's the topography of the glass is now smoother than it was without the coating. And again, that's going to keep anything from sticking to the glass because it's now a smoother, harder surface. Let's go ahead and put these down. Okay, then I think we have one more tire to dress when we're done wiping the armor coat off there. Can you get that, Jeff? Uh, yeah, if you want to go ahead and grab that wheel and get the armor coat on there. And actually, all, all, all the wheels need to be um, clean. I've already wiped them all down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to use is the permanent trim restore. That's the C4. Now, a lot of new cars have black or gray plastic trim on them. And we've all seen what happens to them after they're exposed to uh, driving conditions, the sun they start to fade and really start to look ugly. The whole car can look great, but the plastic looks ugly. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna restore a factory new look to the plastic, and then it's gonna be permanent. It's gonna keep it looking that way so it doesn't fade. And this is, uh, this is also gonna become a functional part of the, the plastic itself. So it becomes, it bonds, and it uses what they call a covalent bonding a process so it actually bonds to the plastic becomes part of the plastic so it won't just wear off you probably use plastic um, dressings in the past as soon as it rains you see the stuff washing off okay and one of the reasons for that is because plastic doesn't absorb well I mean it's not like a cotton towel where it absorbs water really easily so dressings have a tendency to just sit on them and then they'll wash off when you wash the car or you drive in a rainstorm this product actually bonds to the plastic, so it becomes a part of the plastic, so it's not going to wash off. So the results you get, the results you see, they're going to stay there. So Jeff, you want to give me a hand with this? Here's a clean applicator pad. I'm going to have you jump on the other side. What we're going to do is we're going to hit, this is uh, up right across the top here. This is a uh, rubber right up here. And down here we've got hard plastic. And uh, let's go ahead and pull the wiper blades back up just to get inside here. And Yancy, can you get in here and see the difference? I got a nice big flat panel right there. Okay, I'm gonna set this right here. Let's not forget where that lid's at. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the soft side of this and just blot some of this on here. Here you go. Okay, so here we go. I've got some onto the applicator pad and I'm just gonna start bringing this in here and working this in. And you can see instantly it's darkening the plastic and it's making it look brand new again. And what you want to do with this, you want to take and you really, again, just like all these coatings, you want to take and work this in really well. And you don't want to get this on the glass. Now, Rob over at G-Tech, he's very adamant about this. He says if you get this on the glass and you don't wipe it off real quick, you're going to get it off with a razor blade. That's how strong the bond is for this coating. So just be careful, take your time when you're applying this, and if you do get any of the glass, just instantly wipe it off. And did you get all that, Jeff? Yeah. Okay, just make sure Justin over there putting it on the glass. <laughs> Could you hand uh, both Jeff and me one of those blue microfiber towels? Thanks, sir. Okay, can I get that? Thank you. And this is another uh, surface that after washing, it's a good idea to go ahead and wipe this down with IPA and get it completely grease and oil free. And that way the uh, coating can actually bond to the plastic. You want anything in the way that would hinder the bonding action. This is probably one of the things I find um, the most unsightly on new cars is the plastic trim. Um, Classic cars, you know, if you go back to the 70s, the 60s, the 50s, the 40s, 
most of the trim on those cars is chrome or stainless steel, and, and the, the stuff's basically impervious to uh, corrosion and degradation, uh, so they hold up really well. But uh, modern cars, just because of the price of chrome and stainless steel, use a lot of plastic trim, and it looks good as brand new, but it just slowly goes downhill. So probably one of the best things you could do is if you buy a brand new car, the first thing you want to do is wash it, clean it, and get some of this coating on there. And that way, the plastic trim will hold up just like the paint. It'll always look good. Okay, so after you get that worked in, come down here, take your microfiber towel. You don't want to wipe too hard or you'll wipe that coating off but you do want to get any excess off so you leave a nice uniform appearance on the plastic itself. Okay, now if you look up here, Jeff, this is going to be kind of hard because we've got, this is a glass right here, but there's a strip of rubber right here. So let's go ahead and just knock this out. You need some more product? Okay. Uh, Randy, you want to go grab that so you can set that down because um, this is going to be pretty hard to get this on here, not get it on the glass, but let's see what we can do here. Well, we could tape it, but I'm just going to be careful here. Watch this. Wow, look at that. Come back. I'm using my fingernail right along that edge there. Wipe that off. Now, Jeff here. Jeff, what's your last name? Bell. Be Jeff Bell. He's a professional detailer, details cars. Wait, six days a week, five days a week? Seven. Seven days a week. And uh, you probably see a lot of ugly faded plastic trim, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, BMW out in the front. <laughs> Yancey yeah. just said his BMW's out front and wants us to say, hey, you know, for a price, we can work on anything, Yancey. Uh, do your customers, do they understand that this, these types of materials just fade when they're exposed to the sun? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're happy when you come by and restore them for them? Oh, right on the roof. Okay, so we got that. Now, <clears throat> The sides of this, in fact, right here by the plastic mirror, if you want to get in there and get that, this is hard plastic. Again, this would be an area that's going to fade, so you just want to come down here and work that on there. Yeah, if you see any streaks and smears, go ahead and wipe that off. Got it. Okay. And you know what, guys? I think we forgot to put the C1 crystal lacquer on the mirror housing, okay. and we were going to address these matte. This is actually, if you look, Nancy, can you get it on the, the A pillar? The, 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 the pillar here between the glass and the front window, this is called the A pillar on a car. And this is actually a vinyl sticker. It's a matte black sticker. And uh, you can use the crystal one on that also. I think when we were doing the hood, we were so focused on the hood, we forgot to get that. But let's go ahead, if you want to, Rennie, go ahead and grab the C1. Yeah, and they can come back and just wipe any of that excess off of the plastic, just like that. Okay. Looking for the C1. So back to the crystal lacquer. Got a fresh applicator pad. I'm just going to take and put this on this matte black graphic here on the A pillar. Work that in really good. At the same time, I'm going to hit this mirror. So beautiful high gloss black mirror accentuates this uh, high voltage yellow paint. I'll tell you what, Jeff, if you want to come over here and wipe the B A pillar down in the mirror, I'll come over and dress this side. So Jeff, now after you wiped off the excess, how does that matte look? Is it back to a rich sheen or did it leave it glossy looking? Rich sheen. Yeah, and that's what we want. That's a, I, you know, I didn't want to uh, taint what you were going to say, so I wanted you to just tell me what you saw there. 
But when you're working on a matte surface, you actually don't want to make it glossy. That's not the purpose of matte. It's supposed to be dull. But what happens over time is it becomes very lifeless. You know, it becomes very dulled and uh, grayed out, so to speak. And um, so a product like this, what it does is it brings back the rich color without adding a lot of gloss to it. Hey, we're going to swap batteries on my mic real quick, so hang tight. Holding a little bit on my, my neck. As long as, as long as we got good good audio. Ten four. Hey, that does look good. That looks really good. Okay. Tell you what, Jeff, this is a brand new clean microfiber. Once you give that side of the glass one more wipe, then we'll set these down. Okay, did you guys get all the wheels done? You're working on the last one here, Rennie? Nope. Uh, Jeff, did you get that tire dressed? Uh, this one right here? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'm going to have Yancey come down. We have this tire here is completely coated with the Bio Armor and with the G Technique tire and trim dressing. And if you look at this, man, this thing just looks beautiful. We've got the yellow paints completely shined up and glossy. The wheel is, not only does it look beautiful, it's completely protected. It's going to make cleanup a heck of a lot easier. And the tire hasn't got a high gloss. I'm not a high gloss fan. I like a natural sheen. It has a real nice deep dark black look to it. So we've got everything coated. And the next thing I want to talk about is I've got two more products here I want to talk about. <clears throat> Let's start here with the uh, C1.5 Silo Seal. Now, this is spelled S-I-L-O. And here in America, we have things called barn silos, and that's how you say the word and spell the word silo. And so I went up and I just wanted to make sure I had this correct, but it's actually pronounced silo. And so this is the silo seal. Now, you have to let the C1 crystal lacquer coating completely cure hard for a minimum of 12 hours before you use this. So we're not going to spray this on, but this would be the next step. It's an optional step. You can use this as a standalone sealant or you can apply it and layer it over the top of the C1 crystal lacquer. And what it's going to do is it's going to create a thicker, since you can layer it, coating, but it's going to create a hydrophobic surface that's going to, again, expel water, dirt, and contaminants so they can't stick onto this paint, possibly stain it, corrode it, or etch it. But that's called the silo seal or the silo seal. And that's a spray product that comes with a uh, sprayer like you see right here. So you would just spray that on and uh, work it in uh, like, uh, like a spray-on wax or a spray-on sealant with a clean microfiber towel. And then wipe off any excess residue so you leave a nice hard dry shine. But that's the Silo Seal, uh, C1.5. Now after you get your car completely coated with all the various G-Technique coatings, the next most important thing you want to do is wash your car. And for that, G Technique has introduced a product they called G Wash. And this is a uh, non detergent wash. And it's probably the best way to take care of these coatings. You don't want to introduce anything to the coatings, you know, that would be too harsh to them. It's like the wheels. You don't want to use the acid wheel cleaner on something you put the wheel armor on. So you want to use the, the uh, G Wash. And um, I use this there to go. It has a very nice cherry scent. It lathers up really good. Lots of suds. Good cleaning action. Rinse is really good. A great way to take care of anything coated with the G Technique products. Uh, let's go ahead and put these wiper blades down. And uh, I think Rennie's just about done. You're wiping off the wheel armor there now? Yes, sir. Okay, so we, do we get all the wheels coated or just the front ones? Okay, so we got to get the back two ones. All the tires are dressed. And we got the complete front clip here coated with the crystal lacquer. So we're going to let Yancey come in here and get some beauty shots. And then when he's all done, me, Jeff, Jeff, and Renee are going to go ahead and finish polishing out the rest of the paint, 
chemically stripping it with a IPA water uh, dilution, get it completely clean. Then we're going to go ahead and put the crystal lacquer on the rest of the car. And that way when Nikki comes to pick this up later on tonight, the car will be completely done. And I'll give her a bottle of the Silo Seal to take home and then she can play with that with her husband uh, as far as uh, taking care of it and adding on some of that hydrophobic uh, nano course technology in the Silo Seal. So if you're ready, Yancy. Good job there, Rennie. That looks good. And you know, something I think we missed here that I just want to cover is you can actually take the crystal lacquer and you can actually put this on your headlights too. So just since we're here, let me go ahead and get that real quick. And again, you just want to take and work this in really good. You're not going to be able to really see the film because the, uh, the lens itself is clear. But again, this is going to seal this plastic up. It's going to become a functional part of the plastic itself so it won't wear off and it's gonna create a, a coating that's gonna repel dirt, grime, moisture, anything that would hit that lens. So I'll tell you what, you wanna go ahead and wipe that off, Jeff? I'll get this one. And I think that kind of wraps up tonight's Thursday night live broadcast here at Auto Geek's Show Car Garage in sunny Stewart, Florida. If you want more information about any of these products, you can visit autogeek.net. We are an authorized seller of G-Technic products here in the United States. I think you should go up, give them a try. Need more information, you can always give us a call, 1-800-869-3011. And we'll see you again on the next Thursday night live broadcast from autogeek.net. Okay.